Michelle Anderson. I'm going to talk to you today about science and sexism and the struggles of early women in science. If I asked, I bet most of you could name a few physicists. But how many female physicists can you name? Don't feel bad if you can't think of any. I'm going to introduce you to a few. Since I'm a woman that's majoring in physics, I thought it would be interesting to do some research on accomplishments of women in the field. In doing this research, I found some fascinating stories of women who made great discoveries despite trials that they experienced. The late 1800s to well into the 1900s was a difficult time for female scientists. Some, however, were able to overcome struggles of gender discrimination that was dominant at the time and make some amazing progress. Today I'm going to tell you about three brilliant women who were able to do just that. The first was an expert mathematician in the other. The second was, a, was Chan Xing Wu, a Chinese American physicist known for her work with nuclear physics. Finally, we will talk about the British physicist and inventor, Hertha Ayrton. Now that you know who we're going to talk about, let's learn more about their backgrounds and their struggles and accomplishments in the field of physics. Emmy Noether was born in Erlinger, Germany in 1882. According to Dor Doris Simonis and Carolyn Hertzberg, authors of Scientists, Mathematicians, and Inventors, Lives and Legacies, she was educated in the arts, music, and dance, as most girls were at the time, and certified to be a teacher. However, she was not satisfied to stop her education there. German universities did not accept female students, and so another could only attend the classes of professors who would allow her to sit in. She did this for years and in 1904 was finally able to enroll in the University of Erlangen. She earned her PhD in mathematics in 1907. Simonis and Hertzberg further explained her struggles, and I quote, over the next 25 years, Noether worked at various universities as a prima dozen, a person who earned the right to teach but was not paid. It was during these times that she was able to develop mathematical theorems and her theories of symmetry. Eventually, she was able to receive positions as a paid lecturer. She used mathematics to tie together symmetry and the conservation of energy. This is known as Noether's theorem. According to Plunk and Wagnall's New World Encyclopedia, her mathematical theories were used by Albert Einstein in developing his relativistic theories. As you can see, her hard work was definitely not in vain. Not only did she make an important impact in mathematics and physics, she helped women gain the ability to receive an education. That brings us to Qin Shi Wu. She was born in 1912 near Shanghai, China. Richard Garman writes in the October 1997 issue of Physics Today that her father, Wu Zhongyi, opened one of the earliest schools to admit girls. He encouraged her to seek an education at a time when many of the girls did not. She received a Bachelor's of Physics degree in 1934 in Nanjing before moving to the United States to pursue her doctorate in Berkeley. According to the National Women's History Museum's biography on her, Wu received attention for her work on nuclear fission. She worked on the Manhattan Project and spent many years doing nuclear research. She was made acutely aware of gender biases when two of her colleagues received the Nobel Prize, and she was overlooked. Wu did not let this stop her, though. She was the first female president of the American Physical Society and has received many honors. She also went on to encourage young women to pursue careers in science. Wu's experience with gender bias was different from Milder's, and we can see that things were starting to change because she was able to receive an education she was able to get acknowledgement for her work. However, she was still overlooked. Finally, let's consider her for Marx Ayrton. According to Eric Graberson in Britannica Biography, she was born in 1854 in Fort C, England. Her father died when she was a child and she went to live with her aunt, Marion Harto, who ran a school in London. Her early education was mostly by her family who encouraged her to receive higher education and to be an independent woman. She later attended Girton College and the University of Cambridge, although they did not offer degrees to women. Five years 
after entering this college, she was able to pass Cambridge's rigorous mathematics exam and become a math teacher. She took classes on electricity from an electrical engineer that was to become her husband, William Ayrton. They performed electrical experiments together, and she was able to determine the reason that the electric arcs hiss and how it reduced the sound. She published a paper on her research. Tattersall and McMurrin, in their article, Hertha Arrington, a persistent experimenter, published in the Journal of Women's History in June of 1995, mentioned that she was the first woman ever invited to read a paper before the Institution of Electrical Engineers. She continued to work with electricity and wrote other research papers. In 1905, she was the first woman nominated as a fellow of the Royal Society. However, because at the time a married woman had no status in Britain, they would not elect her. She continued in her studies and supported efforts to advance the equality of women for the rest of her life. She did win awards and she was considered a respective scientist despite views on gender at the time. Her personal motto was, whoever endures conquers. As you can see, Ayrton was a very driven scientist who would not let anyone get in her way. Now that we have met a few of these women, what can we conclude? They were brilliant scientists, and they all experienced sexism. Nother, Wu, and Ayrton were determined to work in their fields of interest, whether they had difficulty receiving an education, finding work, or receiving acknowledgement for their work because of their sex. All of these women were pioneers in their field and paved the way for a new generation of educated women seeking career in physics and science in general. These scientists and mathematicians are an inspiration to anyone, male or female, in showing the benefits of endurance. <laughs>